Hello, this is Ali on the Witnesses for Christ, and I'm going to be reading Judges chapter 14. Judges chapter 14, and Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he saw an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. Verse 7, And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time he returned to take her. And he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating and came to his father and mother. And he gave them and they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. So his father went down unto the woman and Samson made there a feast, for so used the young men to do. And it came to pass when they saw him, that they brought thirty companions to be with him. And Samson said unto them, I will now put a riddle unto you. I will now put forth a riddle unto you. If ye can certainly declare it me within the seven days of the feast, and find it out, then I will give you thirty sheets and thirty change of garments. But if you cannot declare it me, then shall ye give me thirty sheets and thirty change of garments. And they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle, that we may hear it. And he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong forth came forth sweetness. Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong something to eat. And they could not in the three days expound the riddle. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take that we have? Is it not so? Verse 16, And Samson's wife wept before him, and said, Thou dost but hate me, and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, and hast not told it me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it my father nor my mother, and shall I tell it thee? And she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, because she lay sore upon him. And she told the riddle to the children of her people. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, if ye had not plowed with my heifer, ye had not found out my riddle. Verse 19. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, 
and he went down to Ashkelon and slew 30 men of them and took their spoil and gave change of garments unto them, which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled. And he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. Heavenly Father, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come before you. And I ask God that this word would go forth. And that whatever you want it to do, that it would go forth to accomplish it. And that it would not return void. I bind up and cast out satanic devices. Satanic attacks in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for shalom and peace. The helmet of salvation and the full armor of God. Against Satan and his fiery darts in the name of Jesus Christ. The bloodshed, the power and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We pray God for a supernatural breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. And that you give us faith and power over fear of death. That we do not idolize fear. That we do not idolize torture. And that the supernatural power of Jesus Christ will give us the strength to endure unto the end. Because Jesus is Lord. Amen. Alright, here we go. Judges 14. It's kind of like an expositional commentary. And or at least as I'm reading it, I'm going to expound and share what's ministered to me through the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name I believe. Okay, and Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. First problem is, she's a Philistine. (laughs) So as a Hebrew or a Jew, he's not really supposed to be uh, dating or being with people that are uncircumcised. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Again, he shouldn't be unequally yoked, if you will, in Corinthians. That's the further up in the Bible passage. Verse 3, Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he saw an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Verse 5. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath And behold, a young lion roared against him. The lion roared. Lion roared. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily, mightily upon him. And and he rent or ripped him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hands, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. So imagine... All of a sudden, you're in the woods or wherever he was. This lion comes to him. I would be scared to death. The Spirit of God comes on him, and he rips it with his own hands. And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. First thing that comes to my mind, and I'm not any better than any moment, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. For she pleases me well, the lust of the flesh. Verse 8, And after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. Now, I'm not totally prepared, but I'm pretty sure in the Torah, you're not supposed to touch dead animals. <laughs> and especially take honey and eat out of it, but I'd have to double check. Verse 9, And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating. And came to his father and mother, and he gave them, and they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion, most likely because you're not allowed to touch unclean things, dead animals and stuff. Verse 10. So his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast. 
for so used the young men to do. And it came to pass when they saw him that they brought thirty companions to be with him. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. If ye can certainly declare it me within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you thirty sheets and thirty chains of garments. But if you cannot declare it me, then shall ye give me thirty sheets and thirty chains of garments. And they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle that we may hear it. So right there, it's almost like a basketball game. It's like a it's like a tug of war. They're teasing each other. He's throwing riddles. And then they're saying, put forth your riddle. And whoever loses has to give 30 chains of uh, garments and sheets, if you will. And most likely they were probably very expensive. Verse 14. And he said unto them, out of the eater came forth meats. Out of the strong, something sweet came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. Verse 15. 15, sorry. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband, that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee in thy father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take that we have? Is it not so? So the first thing that comes to my mind is, they're threatening Samson's wife. If she doesn't give the information, we're going to burn you, they said. Verse 16. And Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou dost but hate me. So she's nagging him. Uh, that might be rude, but she's nagging. She she's, she's, keeps asking him. Just like Delilah kept pressing him. This is twice. It starts with his Philistine wife that she's nagging him. And then after he discloses it, they tell the riddle. And then he goes and <laughs> kills 30 people, if you will. And then he gives the change of garments to the Philistines. And Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou dost but hate me and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people and hast not told it me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it my father nor my mother, and shall I tell it thee? So the main thing is, is Samson kills a thousand people with his own hands. So didn't she know that this man, Samson, could outtake, was stronger than all the Philistines? I don't think she did. Or if she did, she was mixed up. Because she's threatened to be burned with fire. <laughs> threatened to be burned with fire. And if she would have told her husband, hey, the Philistines are threatening me to, to disclose this riddle. And if I don't get the riddle's information, they're going to kill me. She never, it doesn't say that. It doesn't bring that information up. So the first thing that comes to my mind was, didn't she know how strong he was? Did his, did his wife, Samson's wife, know how strong Samson actually was versus the threat of the Philistines, the enemies? Verse 17. And she wept before him the seven days. So they're at a wedding feast and she's crying all, the, all seven days. Don't you think the information would, would have came out? <laughs> that he told her because she lay sore upon him. Sore upon him. Same with Delilah. Nagging him. He was flirting with it too though. And she told the... And she told the riddle to the children of her people. Huh. Verse 18. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down, what is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? And what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, if ye had not plowed with my heifer, Ye had not found out my riddle. So plowed with my heifer. My wife and I looked up the word heifer dealing with like the red cow thing and how they had to do some of the, um, uh, 
religious ceremonies or particular Torah commandments with the red heifer. I think it was had to do with um, the ashes and stuff. But he was saying to those Philistines, if you had not plowed with my heifer, you wouldn't have had, had discovered my riddle. So it's, it's just like, it's shocking that she never told the information to Samson that she was being threatened to be killed by these Philistines. Unless, maybe possibly, she never knew his strength. But I don't know that. That answer, exactly. Verse 19. Judges chapter 14, verse 19. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. And he went down to Ashkelon and slew 30 men of them and took their spoils. So the first thing that always confused me was, <laughs> he just killed 30 men, but the spirit of the Lord came on him and he slew 30 men. So that was so hard for me to understand because Jesus said in Matthew 5, love your enemies, turn the cheek, things like this sort. So I couldn't understand how God's spirit came upon him and then he actually goes and slew 30 men. When it's, you know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder. You know, killing and murdering are distinctive, some would argue, and I believe it's valid. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he went down and he went down to Ashkelon and slew 30 men of them and took their spoil and gave change of garments unto them which expounded the riddle and his anger was kindled and he went up to his father's house but Samson's wife was given to his companion whom he had used as his friend unbelievable this guy's in a tough situation so the riddle thing the riddle thing falls through Samson goes and kills 30 people he disappears, he goes kills 30 people. Uh, Samson's wife's dad gives Samson's wife to his friend, his companion. <laughs> so I'm at a wedding, I get married and I get angry, I disappear, I go kill somebody because the spirit of the Lord came on me in that time, in that context of judges. Um, and basically I come back and my wife was given to my best man. That is wild stuff, and I'm not trying to uh, be smart. I'm just saying this is really what happened to Judges. I love Judges 14, 15, and 16. Uh, I've, I've listened to the whole book of Judges. It's not simple read, and some of the uh, King James translation of Judges is hard to understand. If you get a more modern-day translation, which I wouldn't advise you to stay there the whole time, but it does help you. It does help you to simplify it. It'll help you to simplify it. Stop, please. Hey, thanks for listening. Judges 14, Witnesses for Christ. Ali on the Witnesses for Christ. Peace out. God bless. Say bye. Bye. Dear God. Dear God. Save me. Save me. Please. God in heaven. Amen.